I'm joined here today by Assistant Chief uh, Deputy Chief Allen Hamilton and Lieutenant Oldfield uh, from our Missing Persons Unit. I wanted to provide you an update on the ongoing search for 30-year-old Hannah Kobayashi, who was reported missing last month. As the family is aware, late yesterday, after traveling to the U.S.-Mexico border, we reviewed video surveillance from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, which clearly shows Kobayashi crossing the United States border on foot into Mexico. She was alone with her luggage and appeared unharmed. At this time, Kobayashi's case has been classified as a voluntary missing person. I know over the last few days, uh, there have been several questions raised surrounding her flight to New York. Our investigation, corrobor corroborated by video evidence, clearly shows Hannah at LAX appearing unharmed after arriving from Maui on November 8th of this year. For unknown reasons, she decided not to board her pre-scheduled flight to New York that same day. From November 8th to 11th, video footage and still imagery showed Hannah at various locations around Los Angeles. This information was subsequently verified by LAPD detectives. While she did check her bag through to New York, she requested her bag be sent to her at LAX, where we have surveillance footage of her retrieving it from the baggage carousel on November 11th. LAPD Missing Persons Unit has conducted extensive witness interviews, reviewed video surveillance, and collaborated with local and federal law enforcement agencies on this case. To date, the investigation has not uncovered any evidence that Kobayashi is being trafficked or is the victim of foul play. She is also not a suspect in any criminal activity. Additionally, the investigators noted that before departing Maui, Kobayashi expressed the desire to step away from modern connectivity. Our priority is ensuring Ms. Kobayashi's safety and well-being, and we urge Ms. Kobayashi to contact her family, law enforcement, or personnel at the U.S. Embassy to let us know that she is safe. She has a right to her privacy, and we respect her choices, but we also understand that the concern her loved ones feel for her. A simple message could reassure those who care about her. While the LAPD investigation will not continue into Mexico, if anyone has credible information about Hannah's whereabouts, please contact local law enforcement. If Kobayashi returns to the United States, law enforcement will be notified. The missing person case will remain active in the missing and unidentified persons system until her safety is confirmed by law enforcement. Anyone with additional information regarding this case may contact the Los Angeles Police Department at 877-LAPD-247 or 877-527-3247. Anonymous tips can also be submitted to Los Angeles Regional Crime Stoppers at www.lacrimestoppers.org. Let me open it up now if you have any questions. Uh, if I cannot answer them, if the detail is such, I will uh, refer it to one of my partners here. Chief, safe to say that no crime has been committed then, no evidence of that. I'm sorry, say that again? Safe to say that no crime has been committed, there is no evidence of it. At, at this point, uh, we have not been able to determine any crime has been committed. Chief, given that, there's no reason that any law enforcement agency can detain or arrest one of the officers. That's correct. Is there any indication from her family that there were arguments, disagreements, problems prior to her leaving Hawaii during a period of a month where she's been sort of seen nothing? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, no indication that there would be anything to uh, to cause this to happen in this fashion uh, for her to, to go off. But like any family situation, you know, who knows what the dynamics are. Yeah, let me let me uh, address that to Lieutenant Oldfield if... Uh, if you would, Doug. I'll give you a first name, last name, please. Douglas Oldfield, D-O-U-G-L-A-S, last name Oldfield, O-L-D-F-I-E-L-D. -E I'm the officer in charge of the Special Enforcement Section out of Detective Support and Vice Division, which handles the missing person unit. Okay. Right, so for the question of whether she wanted to disconnect by looking at her past social media, we then saw indications that there were some desires or posts that would be consistent in somebody who would have the desire to disconnect from their phone. I think it's not something that uh, that I have available right now. It's just that was part of the investigation. Are we 100% right on that? We can't say, right? It, that we just know that she did not have her phone after she left LAX, right? Around 1800 to 1900. We know she doesn't have her phone on her. For what reason? We can't we can't say for sure. Yes. So she traveled through the MTA. She then made it to Union Station. At Union Station, she used her passport and cash to purchase a ticket to get to uh, the border, and she then crossed the border. Yes. Uh, she appeared uh, fine. She was with nobody else. Uh, I have nothing additional, but I have observed the video, yes. I spoke with Hannah's sister earlier today, and she says the family disagrees with law enforcement's assessment. What do you say to them? Well, we, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Alan Hamilton, I'm the chief of detectives for the LAPD. Um, we understand that there are concerns uh, on behalf of family and friends. Uh, we've been very transparent with the family to this to this point. Uh, we have had daily communication and contact with family members, and we've given all the information that we can provide uh, in terms of what our investigation has entailed, what the efforts have been on behalf of the LAPD and other partner law enforcement agencies. Um, 
we've put a lot of resources into this investigation. So, so just to be clear uh, to the public, uh, the LAPD has taken this report seriously from the moment that we received it, and we have expended a lot of resources to include a trip this past weekend to the U.S.-Mexico border to collaborate with our partners there. So this is an investigation where we've done a lot of things face-to-face uh, -face with our partners, and uh, we've done uh, extraordinary, we've gone through extraordinary measures in terms of our technological investigations in this case. Uh, we've, we've really left no stone unturned, and it's led us to this conclusion and the information that the chief is providing today. Alex, I don't know viewers, I kind of want you to know, but is there anything in the information you're getting from previous messages, things like that, which mentions the name of a person, a group, or something that might have assist her in disconnecting from society? Is this an individual desire, or she expressed some kind of a, a knowledge or an awareness of a certain kind of pattern of social you know, organization she might want to join somewhere in Mexico? Generalized individual desire, we have no information that she's working with anyone else. A tremendous amount of manpower, yeah. Yeah, a lot of personnel involved in any major investigation like this and in order to try and protect those that are, in many cases, very vulnerable. Uh, my, my, my ask would be to anybody considering doing this, Think about the people that are you're leaving behind, your loved ones who are going to be worried sick about you, uh, the number of people, uh, including law enforcement and, and other partners who are going to be looking for you, which then potentially takes them away from other work that is also critically important. So there's a lot uh, other than somebody just deciding that they want to leave and disconnect. Uh, consider those that, that are behind you and those that will be impacted by your actions. Obviously, your heart goes out to the family. They're worried about the Absolutely. daughter. And then, of course, we know that the father is gone as well. So right. this is a family that's faced a lot of tragedy. Right. What would you say to them, Chief? I'm very sorry uh, to the family for all that they've been through throughout this ordeal. Uh, we're very sorry for their loss. Um, and I, I don't know that words can express, you know, the you know the feelings that they're going through during this very difficult time. Uh, but there's a, a lot of people uh, very much in support of, of, of what they're going through. Yes, Chief, this is back on the family. They and the daughter basically have got settled between them. Yeah, I mean, we're... we're We've we've basically done everything we can do at this point. Uh, she's left the nation, uh, left the country, and, and in another nation now. So, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, in the earlier comments, that if she comes back into the U.S., law enforcement will be notified of that, and uh, you know try and do whatever we can if there's a need to at that time. Mexican authorities, though, have a certain degree of latitude way beyond what forces here in the United States might have. Have you advised them of the situation, filled them in as much as you can? Might they decide? Yeah, I, I haven't had any interaction. I don't know if, uh, no, nothing, no. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, November 12th at 12.13 p.m. She walked through the tunnel that leads to uh, Mexico. She, yeah, she walked through the, so it's the San Ysidro Port of Entry, and she walked through the tunnel that leads to Mexico, and that was at 12.13 on the 12th, 12.13 p.m. What about the text messages that she sent to her family before it went silent? It sounded as though she was in distress. Can you speak to her state of mind and what indication that gave to you, if at all? So we, we can't speak to her state, state of mind. Um, we, are, we are aware there have been some communications prior. Uh, we are aware of that communication, and um, we cannot necessarily interpret. I, I think some of the communication can be interpreted in a number of different ways. So at this time, we're not able to interpret those communications without having Hannah present to explain, you know, uh, how she felt when she sent them and, and what the specific meanings were for those those messages. Uh, so the question was about the individual that she was identified traveling with on the metro. Uh, we have identified that individual. That individual was cooperative in the investigation. That individual cooperated by allowing himself to be interviewed with his attorney present and family members. Uh, he gave a full disclosure of the entire sequence of events. We utilized independent investigative techniques to verify his story and it fully checked out. Uh, they met at LAX. All right. Thank you. Stop smashing Amazon's buy button and start getting Amazon to pay you instead. So that is the most recent update. If I hear anything more, I will definitely let you guys know. Thank you guys for watching. And send prayers to Hannah's family. And hopefully Hannah will contact her family or law enforcement. Please hit that like button, comment below, and share this out. Have a great night.